Hey, beauty friends, it's Meredith Roddy from Beetle On and Artistic Wire. Welcome to another Jewel School workshop. Today, we are going to be doing a wire wrapped pendant, and we're going to be using one of the newest tools to the Jewel School arsenal. It is a nylon inner jaw flat nose pliers. It is going to be the tool that we use to make sure that we get our prongs perfectly measured to do a really cool prong set wire wrapped stone. So it might be a technique that's new to you. It's a technique that I learned from my friend Jem Hawks and she is an amazing wire worker and I am very grateful for her to for allowing me to teach you all this really really cool technique. So the first thing that we are going to need to do our wire wrapped stone is a stone, a cabochon. And today I am using a 22 by 30 millimeter oval cabochon. And the instructions that go along with this workshop are for this 22 by 30 millimeter cabochon. But I will say that this is a technique that once you learn it, you can adapt it to many, many different sizes and shapes of cabochons. So again, we're using a 22 by 30 millimeter cabochon today. You are also going to need one, yes, just one six millimeter bead that coordinates with your cabochon. It could complement your cabochon or it could coordinate and be the same stone as your cabochon, but you just need one. And of course, for our project today, we are just going to be making the pendant. But if you want to use more of that stone and create a whole necklace to hang your cabochon from, I definitely recommend that as a follow up to today's project. We are going to be using for our wire wrapping 20 gauge color craft wire. Now you could also use 20 gauge artistic wire or German style wire, but 20 gauge is a really good gauge because it's not too hard on the fingers and it's going to be strong enough to be able to make the frame that we need for our project. We are also going to need some 26 gauge wire and that 26 gauge wire is going to be what we use for the back of our set, our prong set cabochon. We are also going to need several different tools. Now I mentioned already, we are going to need the flat nose nylon inner jaw pliers. We are also going to need the bent chain nose. So let's look really quickly at the difference in the jaws of these pliers. One is flat, kind of like a duck bill, and the other has a nice bent chain nose. So in your toolkit, you should have many of these tools. The round nose plier is what we are going to do to use to turn our wrapped stone into a pendant that we can then use to string on a strong necklace. Of course, we will all always need a good nipper. Of course, we know as jewel schoolers, this is our favorite nipper, right? Our blue handled cutters here. They are going to be indispensable for our project today. And last, we are going to need a bracelet bending plier. So it's a tool that you might not have seen before, and it's a nice to have tool. I'm gonna to show you how you can bend your cab into a round shape without using this tool, but you'll also see when I do use this tool, how much easier it is when you use it. So must have tools, nice to have tool. So good good to, to know in any project, several different ways to achieve your goal. So I think we're ready to go ahead and get started. We have our materials, we have our tools, we have our cab and our bead. It is time to get started. So first things first, we are going to cut about 12 inches of this 20 gauge wire. You could use 18 gauge wire, but I wouldn't recommend using anything thicker and I wouldn't recommend using anything thinner. So I'm going to use my beading mat right here, this tray that I'm working on as a guide to cut my wire. And after I've cut my wire, I'm going to use those nylon jaws to give it a little straighten. I want that wire to start and it's very helpful. 
If you hold that wire with the other pliers as you're doing this, you always want your tools to work for you, not against you. And once I have that a little straighter, I'm just gonna give it a, little, a couple of, of passes with my fingers to get that wire nice and warmed up and nice and ready to be made into some prongs to set my stone. So if we look over here on, our, on the finished example, we can see that there are 10 prongs that are wrapped all around this stone. And on the back, you have that thinner 26 gauge wire holding everything together. So the first step we are going to do is make these prongs and then we are going to set our stone within the framework and then zip up the back with that wire. So first step, as I mentioned, we are going to make those prongs. So in order to do that, we are going to take the flat nose plier. And again, this flat nose plier is going to be our guide for this whole project. I'm going to hold my 12 or so inch piece of 20 gauge wire. And I'm going to hold it all the way in the back of the metal part. So let's look at that plier when we have a, while we have a second. There is a short end here at the tip. There's a little bit of a thicker part, which is the back of the jaw. And then there's that nylon jaw part of the plier. And we are going to be using all three of those parts in turn to make the prongs to wrap our bezel. So the other most important tool that I almost forgot calling out and mentioning are going to be our fingers. So my index finger and my thumb are gonna be the stars of the show for this project. And they're, they're warmed up and ready to go because what I need to do is using my pliers as a guide, I'm going to bend the left wire up at 90 degrees and I'm going to bend the right wire up at 90 degrees. And then I'm gonna, again, use my fingers to get that wire nice and straight. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it helps if it's just a little bit straighter and nice and warm and ready to party. Okay, so I wanna make sure that I have that nice double right angle bend right there on that wire. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the first prong on the right-hand side. I'm gonna hold that wire in the smaller part of my pliers now. And I'm going to bend, again with my finger, up, around, and down that pliers. So I have one wire pointing out to the right, one wire pointing out to the left. But now what I need to do is I need to push the two sides of that prong together. I don't want there to be that much space in between that prong. And that's where that nylon jaw comes in so handy because I'm gonna hold it in the back, right in that nylon jaw, and I'm going to gently squeeze Gently, gently, gently. The less is more approach is what you definitely want to take here. And then I'm going to give a little squeeze here on the side. And now that prong is good to go. Okay, just a little chomp down. So it has brought the two sides of that wire together. It has work hardened that wire a little bit, so it's a little bit stronger than it was when it started out. Now what I need to do though is finish that prong. And in order to do that, I'm gonna hold it again in the back jaw of my pliers. And with my finger, I'm going to push that prong up against my plier. So everything is very much at right angles in this project, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do that same series of steps on the other side. So I'm going to hold my wire in the tips of those pliers. With my finger, I'm gonna push up and around and over so that my wire is now pointing out 
to the right. And now I'm going to come in in the back jaw of those pliers and squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Now, sometimes when you squeeze, I don't know if you can see that so well, but I over squeezed a little bit. My wire came out of, out of plane. All I need to do is with that nylon jaw pliers, just give it a couple more chomps or a couple of chomps and it brings it right back into, into where it needs to be. And because I'm using the nylon jaws to do that, it's not going to nick my wire. It's not going to mar my wire. It's not going to mess my wire up in any way. And again, I just, I use my thumb this time. I alternate between using my index finger and my thumb to push that against that plier to finish that prong. Prongs do like to, to wiggle around a little bit. Okay, so now I have two prongs and I need to make 10 prongs. So I'm going to continue those steps. I'm going to come back into the back of the jaw of the pliers. I'm going to make sure that I'm not too far back, but just far back enough because what I'm doing is I'm measuring the space. I'm measuring so that each time I do these prongs, the space is exactly the same in between each of them. And each time I make a prong, the, sp the space of the prong is exactly the same. So back of the pliers, bent that up at a 90 degree angle, move to the front of the pliers. I'm going to bend up, around and down. And then I'm going to squeeze it together in that back part of the pliers. And sometimes I might need to squeeze it in the front of the pliers. Maybe the wire needs just a little bit more, a little bit more effort to come together. In that case, I just want to do that ever so gently, ever so carefully, so that I don't put any, any nicks or any, any marks into that wire. And then I give it a little chomp, hold it again down on the side, use my thumb as a brace and bend the, bend up with my right hand so I have another 90 degree angle. And I'm going to continue alternating one on one side, one on the other side until, like I said, until I have 10 prongs. Now, for this cabochon that I'm using today, for our cabochon, which is 22 by 30 millimeters, I have found that 10 prongs is the sweet spot. 10 prongs is the way to go. But if your cabochon is a little bit bigger, if your cabochon is a little bit smaller, you will have to adjust your prongs, the number of your prongs, and maybe even the distance between your prongs to make sure that your stone is set the way that you want it to be set. A couple different ways that you can do that. The first is the eyeball technique. <laughs> you can kind of lay your cab down and kind of roll it around along your wire so that you can see if you have enough prongs or if you need to make some more prongs. A little bit more practical way of doing it is to take a tape measure and use that tape measure to actually measure to see how long you need to make your, your series of prongs. Another way to do it would be to get a little piece of, of string or ribbon or beading wire or regular wire, wrap it around your cabochon and that measure it that way. So a couple of different ways from imprecise to more precise to figure out just how long and how many prongs you need for any given cabochon. There is probably a mathematical equation that you can use, a little, little Pythagorean theorem, something in there to figure out exactly how to do those measurements, but that isn't something that that I, that isn't a road that I want to go down. I would rather either measure it or figure it out by, um, by doing a little, a little eyeballing. 
All right, so let's see how many prongs I have so far. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven prongs. So just three more and I should be good to go. So I'm going to continue going along. And if I feel like I need a little bit more torque, I can squeeze in here on that flat part. But generally I get enough, enough of what I need by going in the back and giving a little, little chomp down there. So I'm gonna keep on going. I think that, that means I have two more sets of prongs, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna count again when I get there. Up, around, and over. And I find sometimes too, when I get into the, into the zone of making prongs, and part of the reason why I kind of try to stop and force myself to count more often than maybe I, I necessarily need to, is I, have, I tend to be an over prong maker. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ooh, okay, one more prong. And if they're not perfectly even, not to worry because when we get to that next technique, there will be enough waste on either side that it, it won't matter if you have a little bit more. You just wanna make sure that you have a, a couple of inches on the other side. So one last prong, I've bent it up. I'm holding it right in the tip of my pliers. I'm coming up, around and over. And I'm gonna come in and just give a nice squeeze Make sure I don't over, overcompensate. And now I have a nice, a nice line. Is it the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? Certainly not, but there's a lot of zhuzhing. There's a lot of wire work that we have to do, to go through between now and then, or now and, and our finished pro project. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just come down here and give a little, little chomp all the way down. It's a little bit of work hardening, a little bit of straightening, a little bit of kind of making sure that every, everybody is, is lined up the way that I'd like them to be. So the next thing that we need to do is all of my prongs are now straight up and down, right? But if you look at the example, you can see on the example that the prongs are bent over. So I need to start working those prongs so that they are starting to get into shape, so that they can start bending over and hugging that cabochon. So very, very easy, and that is where the bent chain nose pliers come into play. So you'll see here on my tool, I have made a little mark with a permanent marker about, oh, I don't know, two or three millimeters up the side of the, the pliers. This again is a mark that I've made so that I don't have to do any measuring with a ruler. I don't have to, to keep measuring. I don't have to make any marks on my work. My tool again has become the, the way of, of making sure that each of the bends that I make are going to be the same. So in order to make that bend, I'm going to put that plier onto the prong. And you can start in the middle, you can start on one side. I'm not sure that it matters. I tend to start on one side and work my way across. And I'm lining that up so that the mark of the plier is roughly, as close as I can get it, the top of the mark lines up with the bottom of the wire. So each time I go down the line, I wanna just make sure that my plier is lined up. That line is lined up with the line of my prongs and I'm going to bend it down with my bent chain nose plier. And if you need to, um, to remake your mark, like mine looks like it's getting a little bit faded. I've done a couple of projects with this mark on the pliers. You could just go ahead and make that mark again. It's not, it, it will eventually wear off. Um, so just note that. Maybe you'll, you'll pick up your pliers next time and say, oh my gosh, where are we? I thought I had a mark there. 
and my mark is no longer there, it's permanent marker on stainless steel, so it, it will wipe off, which is actually a good thing because you might have a different spot on a different project that you need to make that mark. But it's roughly a third of the way up is what you wanna go for. And do you see how as I'm going along, it's already coming into a circular shape. Remember, it was straight, right? I haven't done anything differently. It, it almost knows, the wire almost knows where I want it to go as I'm doing this part. It's getting, it, it's getting itself ready to be, to be placed or to be, to be moved into a round shape to go around my cabochon. All right, so here's the last, the last one. I'm going to bend that down. And now I just want to go ahead and I want to double check. I want to see, I'm going to take that cab and I'm going to kind of move it around generally to see how my sizing worked. And it looks like I did a pretty good job. I think that I'm gonna be in good shape once we get to the end of things. But it's not quite in the shape that I need it or want it to be in next. And that's where this tool comes into play. That's where I'm going to use my bracelet, bend, my bracelet bending pliers. So bracelet bending pliers are these great pliers. They have a jaw that's in kind of a half moon shape and it turns wire by bending it down very gently into, into a rounded shape. These are great for making all kinds of bracelet forms and rounding wire. Also happen to be perfect in this case because as I'm going along this wire, you can see that the prongs stick out. So as I am moving these around and turning this wire into a rounder shape to get around that oval shaped cab, it is, bypassing those prongs. So I don't have to worry about those prongs getting bent out of shape. <laughs> They've already bent them into the shape that I want them to be in. I want, don't want them to be bent into a different shape. And I'm just going to go along and along a couple of times, bending a little bit more forcefully each time to get that wire into an oval shape. If you do not have the bracelet bending pliers, my first recommendation is to, to get a pair because they're a very, very versatile tool that I grab for a lot of different applications, not just bending bracelets, this being a perfect example. If you don't have them though, you can use your bent chain nose pliers to achieve this goal. You just wanna be very, very careful as you're going along that you don't nick or mar or bend your wire in any way that it doesn't, that it shouldn't move. But you will, can achieve a very similar goal by going along, by pushing with your thumb and pushing with the bent chain nose pliers as well. Okay? So now that I have that a little bit more bent into shape, I'm going to try it again. And I'm working on, on kind of a squishy bead mat here. I don't recommend that for, do, for, for testing this out. I'm gonna move my, bead, my beading mat aside. And I'm actually gonna work right here on the table because by working right here on the table, I can really make sure that my cab is gonna fit nicely and it's gonna be a nice tight fit. You can see just in the difference when I'm working on that squishy material on, to working on that hard table, how much better I was able to get this fit in. So now what I'm going to look at is where those two wires cross at the top. I'm gonna to turn this over to the side just so that I can see it a little bit better because what I wanna do is with my, chain, my bent chain nose pliers, I want to bend one of those wires straight up and one of those wires to the side. Because what I wanna do here is I'm gonna make a wrapped loop. Now, when you do fancy cabochon, fancy wire work, there are so many ways that you can make a bale. You can do a fancy figure eight weave. You can do a, um, a sumac weave where you weave three times on one side, three times on the other. So many amazing ways that you can do really intricate, really next level wire work. But we're not all 
intricate next level wire workers. Sometimes we just wanna finish a project so that we can turn it into a bracelet. So today I wanna to show you a really easy way to wrap a cab and create a very easy finished a finished part so you can turn it into a finished piece. So what we're going to do is actually do a briolette wrap, add a bead and a wrapped loop. So a great segue, a great beginning into your journey of very fancy wire work if you're not there yet. But if you are there, if you are an advanced wire worker, thank you very much for joining me for class today. Um, maybe this is a technique that would be helpful to incorporate into your wire work as well. So now I need to eyeball this. I need to say, okay, where are those going to cross? And I'm going to kind of see it, see it with my eyeball and pick it up. I'm going to bend one straight up and I'm going to bend one right toward me so that these guys are gonna cross. Now for me, this is the hardest part of the whole project. If you watch my um, tutorials for Beadalon, if you see me on any of the socials, you know that I always say that there's one part of any project that's the hardest part. This part is the hardest part of this project. So if you can master this, it's smooth sailing from here on out. But what we need to do is hold these two pieces of wire and wrap the one that's, that's facing out to the side around the one that's facing straight up and down. And there are a couple of different ways to achieve this. And the way that I achieve it today might not be the same way that I achieve it tomorrow, but I need to find just a little bit of purchase so that I can hold this and start my wrap and continue my wrap around. I also need to do that wrap and continue that wrap around so that we can all see both you and me. So that's always the challenge, right? So maybe I use my fingers a little bit, put my tool in here, hold on to it. But you want to take this step slow and steady, especially because you're using 20 gauge wire and especially because you have this nice frame here that you don't want to squish. So I'm just, I'm using my tools. I'm taking patience. I'm bending around so that I can get this wrapped around two times. And I think I, I think I did it, not too bad. I'm gonna snip off this tail and I'm gonna tuck it in. And then I'm going to make sure that my wire or my, my bezel still fits in there. Now I'm a, little, I'm a little off kilter here. I don't know if you can, you can tell, I'm kind of not 100% symmetrical. No problem, I'm gonna pop that stone back out and I'm just with my fingers, gonna kind of move these cabs around a little bit so that everything is even Steven. So let's try that again, pop that back in. That looks a little bit better to my eye, right? We've got our, our wire coming straight out now. So before I go and um, wrap up the back, I'm gonna go ahead and just finish that, finish the top off. I'm going to take that that lone, that stray six millimeter bead. And you could use really any bead here that you want to. I just happened to have a strand that I thought looked really nice with this stone. And I can decide later on how I want to do the finishing part of this necklace and how I want to turn my cabochon into, or, or I'm sorry, how I want to turn my prong set cabochon into a finished piece. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my round nose pliers. And I'm just gonna come up here and I'm gonna make a simple wrapped loop. So I did my braillette wrap underneath and up here on the top, I'm going to do a simple wrapped loop 
by pushing and pulling, and pushing and pulling. And let's get that nice wrapped up back to the back. And I'm going to snip that off. And then I don't have to worry about finishing that off again. I don't have to worry about having any wires sticking up while I'm and getting in the way while I'm doing that part. But since I have these great nylon insert pliers, I can go ahead and just give a little, a little chomp, a little, little grab onto the top of that loop, just to make sure I have everything in alignment, everything lines up really well, and my wrapped loop looks as professional and well done as I possibly, possibly can get it. But we are not quite yet done with our project because we need to secure that cab within that frame. Right? So, last step of our project is to use some 26 gauge wire. So I'm using 26 gauge wire because I'm going to have to do a lot of loops or a lot of wrapping around. And I don't really want it to overpower my design. Um, it also is when you see we're going to be going around our wires and anything thinner than 26 gauge wire or 24 gauge wire will also work. It gets a little fiddly in my opinion. So we pulled out about 12 inches of wire when we started our cab. We're gonna do about 12 inches of wire now. And snip that off. And I'm just gonna use my fingers to straighten that wire, get it a little bit warm and ready to, ready to be wrapped around the back of the cab. Now, as you're doing this, I like to kind of start with my cab already in there, just makes it a little easier for me. If your cab is a little loose or it doesn't wanna stay in there, that's okay too. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look here and I'm gonna see all of these different spaces, right? We have this space here at the top, then a space here, space here, space here, space here, space here, 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 and here. So I'm going to start at, let's just, let's call this 11 o'clock, right? If we're calling this and looking at it, a at it as a clock. We're gonna start at 11 o'clock and I'm going to wrap this around three times to secure it. If you've done any wire wrapping, it's kind of a, a standard way of securing any wire. I've got a little tail here. I'm gonna come around and back through once. Pull that through. around and back through twice. Sometimes your wire isn't gonna quite wanna go and cooperate the way that you want it to. Just kind of give it a, a moment to, to let you know where, where it wants to go, where that bend is, and then you show that wire who's boss. <laughs> around twice, and then we're gonna go around one more time That's why you wanna make sure that you don't have too long of a piece of wire here, but also enough so that you can lace up the whole back. So here we go, that's three times. Then I'm gonna take my pliers and I'm just gonna squeeze that together. This is not the neatest of all wire wraps that I've ever done, but you know what? A little squeeze can take care of a lot of ills. Perfect, and a little a little, little tug there too. I got that wire behaving the way that I want it to. So now I'm going to not go straight across. I'm gonna come one down to about three o'clock if we're still continuing, but, but with thinking of the back of our stone as a clock. So I'm gonna come here, pull this through. And I'm not gonna worry about the wraps. I'm just gonna loop it around and back and pull it back down and across the other way. I don't need to do loops there. If I try to do loops there, it just gets a little, a little messy. My wire gets a little unhappy with me. It starts to work hard and get a little brittle and I don't need them there. They're doing their job or this wire is doing its job just by coming straight across. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna skip over here and I'm gonna come through 
at that, about that five o'clock spot over here on this side. And I might not be able to go straight through, okay? I might need to find a little gap. I might need to find a spot. I might need to kind of zhuzh it up a little bit. I just kind of push that cab down so I could find some space. And if it doesn't go through right away, grab your chain nose pliers and pull it through. So there are lots of different ways to achieve your goals as you're doing wire work. It's not just um, just kind of back and forth one way of being able to do it. There are a lot of different ways, a lot of different tips and tricks to make that wire do what you need it to do. And I'm noticing I cut way too much wire, so I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna snip a, a couple inches off. Make my job easier, right? Why not? Why not cut a little extra wire off if it's getting in the way? There's no reason why it has to, to keep, keep being there and keep bugging you. So now I'm going to kind of look here and I'm going to say, okay, now I'm going to pull this straight across. And again, I might need to give it a little wiggle. I might need to pull it here with my pliers a little bit to get it nice and, and ready to go. The more times you move that wire across, the more it's going to work harden. So by kind of warming it up in your hands, it makes it a little bit more malleable, a little bit more cooperative. I'm gonna go here, that guy doesn't have anybody to hold him together yet. Back across to this side, and you can see I'm not even really, um, really counting the wires. I'm just kind of looking to see, okay, well, where, what makes sense to go next, right? If I'm wrapping this up and, and tying it, tying everything together nice and, nice and taut. And that last one I need to go through is over here. So I'm going to pull that aside. And now I'm going to go ahead and before I do anything on that back, I'm just going to come and look at my front. Just make sure nothing got, got wonky, nothing kind of came out of, out of place. And you can see that many of my prongs are perfect. This guy over here, he's kind of sticking out. I don't know if you can see that really well on the video, but he's sticking out. So I've got a little zhuzhing to do. I've got a little, a little corrections to do, and that's gonna, that's gonna happen. There's no way that you would get to this step and not, and and be able to have your prongs be perfect. Um, you, there's always zhuzhing that needs to happen. Always a little, a little pushing in, and I'm gonna start that process with my fingers right here. But now I'm ready, I wanna go back and I wanna snip this wire off and snip this wire off. So I wanna make sure that this wire is a little bit tighter. I didn't like how I did that wrap on that first, that first pass. But now since I tightened it up a little bit this way, it's looking a little better, I'm a little happier with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and here and snip that off. And then I'm gonna tuck that in. The difference between uh, level one and next level wire work is making sure that you get those tails nice and tucked in. And now I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna make sure that I'm holding it taut, bent it over here, and I'm gonna do that same three wraps in reverse. So I'm gonna come around here. If my wire wants to, to spring out on me, I'm gonna hold it into place, give it a kind of a little wiggle, a little tug, bring it back around toward me, straighten it with my fingers back around and down, give it a little wiggle, a little tug. I'm noticing that my wire, instead of going next to each other, it wanted to go on top of each other. Why? I don't know, but we're gonna kind of cajole it to be the way next to each other, the way that I want it to lay. One more around, give it a little wiggle, a little tug, back around. Snip it off as close as I can get it and then give a nice little tuck of that wire and a little squeeze of everything together. So if I'm relatively happy with how the back looks, I'm pretty happy with how the back looks, I'm going to turn it around to the front and now make sure that the front is how I like it to look. The last thing that I like to do is a little thing called, that I like that I like to call it's a little thing called burnishing. And there are tools for burnishing, but I usually use the side of my bent chain nose pliers and I find that that works just fine for me for most for most uses, for most needs. And so to do that, I'm just going to kind of come in here and just 
use the side of my bent chain nose pliers and kind of roll those prongs against the stone. And depending on how your stone is cut, how thick your stone is, if it is flat versus rounded, if it has a bezel on it, your prongs are going to sit a little bit differently. So while this is a very versatile technique, each time you do it, each time you do it with a different stone, it's going to be slightly different. So once you learn the technique to make your prongs using the flat nose pliers, to make either a simple or much more complicated loop at the top using your round nose pliers, there are a million different ways that you can take this technique and expand it, do different bales, different finishing techniques, use it in all different ways to make finished jewelry. And there you have it for the Jewel School Workshop. A simple wire wrapped pendant using the nylon inner jaw flat nose pliers to create prongs to bezel set a cabochon. I hope you enjoyed that workshop and learned some new tips and techniques and perhaps some tricks to turn some of the cabochons in your stash into beautiful pendants. I'm Meredith Roddy from Beadalon and Artistic Wire. Thank you again so much for joining me and until next time, happy beading. Mm -hmm.